because they've kept their cards so close to the vest and they, they won't show us who they are, now we're waiting for the draft to define them. I'm curious about their coaching staff in the who are you capacity. And McCordy, I'll, I'll lean on you here. It, it, what, what, from what you know of these guys and their personalities and knowing Gerard and he is the one that's bringing in, you know, a Dante Hightower, a Ben McAdoo as a senior offensive assistant. T talk to us about just the nature of this coaching room and what these meetings are like. And as you look on this list, a lot of these guys are new that are being brought in that are already on the website. I think there's going to be some holdovers of guys that were on that staff a year ago, especially on the defensive side of the ball with DeMarcus Covington taking over that will remain there. But when you look offensively, it's a lot of different guys. And you mentioned Dante Hightower was a guy that played for a long time there. He's a young guy. Tyquan Underwood came from college as an assistant wide receiver coach. He He's a young guy. Tyler Hughes is a guy brought back that was in New England before. But I also think when you're bringing in some of this young coaching staff, to the effect of what Gerard Mayo is, you have veterans like McAdoo and like Van Pelt who have been around it for a long time, specifically on the offensive side of the ball that's going to try to help create change. And you look at Van Pelt and Jacoby Brissett. Those two guys were together in Cleveland the year Deshaun Watson was suspended for all of those games, and Jacoby was handed the keys of the organization. And everybody in that locker room talked about his leadership and what he provided for that team throughout that time. I think that's some of what they're looking for, but it is a lot of new coaches. And I think that's what Gerard Mayo is trying to do of saying, you know what? Yes, we want to build off of what the Patriots were and the success that they've had, but we're going to have a brand new way of doing it. And a lot of that is new voices in the coaching room. So the draft brings the opportunity to be brand new as we look forward to the draft. It's just over a month away. New England, as Kyle mentioned, holds the third overall pick, not making any big splashes in free agency. Patriots, do you need to, do you have to, at that number three spot, draft a quarterback or do you trade down and amass more picks considering the <laughs> lack of movement they made in free agency? Or do you take Marvin Harrison and get a number one wide yep. receiver and do what the Ooh. Cardinals did way back when, when they were like, look, there's a lot of quarterbacks and we need a quarterback, but Larry Fitzgerald's on the board and we're taking him. It's mm. like one of those rare prospects. How high do you rank Marvin Harrison on your board where he would be worthy of a third overall pick when you're so desperate for quarterback? Uh, I can't imagine them... Passing on quarterback at three, though, mm. especially unloading Mac Jones the way they did for what I said, the aforementioned um, compensation <laughs> of a ham sandwich and a bag of baseballs. And then choosing to go Brissett, who is a steady veteran leader but is not looked at as one of the you know QB1s of the league over the last mm -hmm. decade. He's always been a great QB2 who could step in in a pinch. And last year, Brissett was awesome for Washington once they finally put him in instead of Sam Howell. He led them against a giant comeback against the Jets and was competitive against the Rams. Um, all that said... You're looking at a quarterback-rich draft. To Kyle's point, Robert Kraft inherited Drew Bledsoe. Um, he's never had a top three pick. I, I think this is a quarterback draft, and you take Mayor Daniels, and you roll the dice, and you convince yourself, whether you like it or not, that those are one of the two guys that are going to be the quarterback for the foreseeable future. And if you really want to make the argument for McCarthy and someone falls in love with J.J. McCarthy, do that too. I don't think with the situation of their roster, okay. with the situation of their owner now entering this part of his life cycle and wanting to win again, and with the situation of a fan base just so hungry for anything exciting, I don't think you can pass on a quarterback and make the argument, well, for team building purposes, we actually need to do X, Y, and Z. Let's hold off on quarterback for another year. See, I wouldn't be surprised if they do that. And I, to your point, I look at what they've done in free agency, and you're saying, I think it, it kind of matches up with the fact of roster building and looking forward to trying to build a team that can actually compete to win a Super Bowl. I wouldn't be surprised if they looked at it and Elliot Wolf, the kind of G GM that is right now, does he look at Jaden Daniels and does he look at Drake May and say, you know what, I can see these guys with the confetti falling around them and us winning a Super Bowl because if not, if you see a guy like a Marvin Harrison Jr. or one of these offensive tackle strings that you've talked yeah. about, this draft is so heavy of Big so Joel. many of them. Joe Alt going Uwaga. in that first round. Do you see one of those guys as potential cornerstones of your organization and maybe a year later or two years later, you see the quarterback that fits or is it a quarterback later on in the draft that you think you can develop over time? I look at the moves they've made so far and I wouldn't be surprised to see them possibly take a guy. I don't think they trade back, but take a guy at that number three spot. They didn't think will be a Patriot for his entire career the next 10, 15 years, what they've done in the past. I would not be surprised to what, see them do real that. Real question. What, what, from your talk of all your Patriots buddies yeah. over the years, and of course you follow the game and we do the show every day, 
Is there a is there a preference between Daniels and May? You think from Patriot fans or from just people in the Patriot? Your, your brother was a Patriot for 15 years. Yeah, yeah. His opinion. Yeah. I think there's some excitement around Jaden Daniels. I think the dual threat of it uh, for so many years being in that building would always talk about those type of quarterbacks were the hardest to defend guys that you had to keep them in the pocket, but then they can still beat you with your arm. So I do think Jaden Daniels brings a lot to the table. Uh, it just matters if they see him truly as a – like that position. We just talked about – You're all the, putting your careers at on the stake. The 21 and the 22 draft of quarterbacks no longer being on their roster right. that were given an opportunity. You just had that with Mac Jones, who's no longer there. Do you truly see one of those guys that are going to be there and be your franchise guy? Come